Welcome to the first video lecture of History 1111 for summer semester. I hope before you watch this, you took a second to watch the welcome video. Uh, the welcome video gives you an idea of what to expect and how the class is going to go. Uh, for this video here, we're going to look at what I call prehistory. Uh, this is the time before written history. And we're going to start with the earliest ancestors. And some of this is based on anthropology, some of this is based on archaeology, some of it's based on historical assumptions. What it looks like is our earliest ancestors are going to appear in the savannas, the grasslands of eastern and southern Africa around four million years ago. And these earliest ancestors stay there for about three and a half million years. A uh, big reason for that is they're limited by climate. Uh, they have to stay someplace that's warm enough, but not too warm. They also have to stay somewhere that's cool enough, but not too cool. Once fire is tamed, all bets are off because with fire, people can move into colder and colder climates. And once fire is tamed, these early ancestors of ours begin to move into places like Europe and Asia. Now our direct ancestors are known as Homo sapiens. Uh, we modern humans are known as Homo sapiens sapiens. Our ancestors are just Homo sapiens. Uh, first appearing somewhere around 40,000 to 100,000 years ago, um, it's going to bring in the the beginning of the Paleolithic or Old Stone Age. Paleo means old, lithic means stone. These Homo sapiens are hunter-gatherers. That means that they have to track down every bite they eat. There is no agriculture at the time. And because everything has to be caught or gathered, you're going to find small groups, no more than 50. And it takes something like two square miles a day to feed one person. So it's lots of hunting, lots of gathering. Uh, because it's also the food gathering, it's a job for everybody. The men are going to hunt big animals, big game. The women are going to hunt smaller animals and the women are going to gather a lot of roots, berries, and fruits. The idea of kinship groups is also really important. Uh, kinship groups are going to be, well, they start out as family groups. And everybody knows how to contribute. Everybody knows what their role is within these kinship groups. It teaches them their role in society. It teaches them day-to-day -day life. It teaches them, uh, you know, what to eat, what not to eat, what plants to use, what plants not to use, uh, their basic belief system, everything else. Now you may have heard of Neanderthals. Uh, Neanderthals are our closest cousin and they lived somewhere between 120,000 to 30,000 years ago. Um, much more robust than what Homo sapiens were. Uh, thicker bones, stronger. Um, that was mainly so that they could survive cold climates. And Neanderthals were just as advanced as Homo sapiens. They had a form of speech. They had burial rites and ritual uh, rituals that surrounded death. Um, and they also intermixed, interbreeded with Homo sapiens. Uh, if you are not of African descent, you have probably 3% of Neanderthal DNA mixed in with yours. If you are of African descent, that number is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1%. We don't know exactly what happened Neand to uh, Neanderthals. Right now, the working hypothesis is that Homo sapiens were able to outcompete Neanderthals, but Neanderthals did exist for a long period of time beside and with Homo sapiens. 
Now, as far as agriculture goes, that is a fairly new invention, if you will. Uh, it's only about 10,000 years ago that the idea of agriculture really comes about. And when agriculture begins, that is known as Neolithic or New Stone Age. Now, the reasons that agriculture begins, uh, number one, there's just not enough food to go around anymore. The more people there are, the more food is needed. The more food there is, the more people there are. Humans, they'd kind of hunted and gathered much of the wild food. And there was an increase in knowledge. There is this ability, this learning, if you will, to domesticate the existing plants and animals. And then last but not least, you have these new technologies that are allowing homo sapiens to keep and store food to transport food to make it easier to ag to do agriculture closely related to agriculture becomes animal domestication and the first animals to be domesticated are sheep goats and, and pigs and this domestication begins in Western Asia, what we think of today as Iraq and Iran. Once this idea of agriculture and once this idea of animal domestication begins, it spreads fairly rapidly. And before you know it, the entire Western Asia region is using some form of agriculture and some form of animal domestication. Uh, you see this especially in what we know today as Mesopotamia or the Fertile Crescent. Along with the rise in agriculture, you get the development of villages. Once people don't need to move around anymore and they can settle in one place, villages start to form. And the idea of villages creates the idea of the artisan or the craft worker. Uh, once villages are created, uh, you soon have specialists who make pottery, specialists who make tools, specialists that make weapons, uh, specialists that make clothes. Woven pots become extremely important to store the food, warm it, uh, and transport the food. Woven clothing, it's going to provide protection from the elements. And then tools are going to make both farming and hunting easier and warfare too. Villages learn that they can trade excess supplies with each other. If village A has too many <clears throat> chickens and village B has too many cows, then village A can trade with village B and both sides end up with chickens and cows. But you get warfare out of this too, because why should village A give up some of their chickens when they can just take some of village B's cows by force. So warfare is going to be a development of the agricultural age and this village life. You're also gonna get city life. As the villages grow, cities are going to begin. And your first cities are gonna develop right around 3500 BC. And cities are going to have farmers, cities are going to have artisans, cities are going to have merchants to sell you the stuff, but cities are also going to have warriors and administrators too. Uh, these warriors, these administrators, uh, they protect the city in some way or another, but they don't really produce, they don't really give back. They just take uh, one development that comes out of the idea of city life is irrigation. Um, irrigation is going to allow places to expand agriculture by bringing water from the source to the fields. And the first place you really see this in large numbers is what we know of today as Mesopotamia or the Fertile Crescent. There are people who learn how to tame the rivers, the Tigris River and the Euphrates River, and this allows food production to increase, which means, of course, population is going to increase too. Before you know it, we have something that looks like civilization. 
Uh, you can really say the first civilization begins around 3000 BC and it was known as Sumer or the Sumerians and it was located at a place where uh, the Euphrates, the Tigris, and the Arabian Sea all meet, uh, basically modern-day Kuwait. And within Sumeria, there were three classes of people. There were the nobles and priests, the upper class, commoners, who were the middle class, and then slaves, who were, of course, the lower class. Now, each of these classes had slightly different rights. Each of these classes had slightly different laws. Each of these classes had slightly different duties and expectations. Trade moves from the village level to the civilization level, and the Sumerians actually develop a form of math that we still use today. Uh, Sumerian math is based on the number 60, and if you think about it, uh, 60 seconds to a minute, 60 minutes to an hour, 24 hours to a day, which is a multiple of 60. Uh, you have three feet in one yard, 12 inches in one, one foot. Uh, you've got 360 degrees in a circle. So all of those factors of 60 or multiples of 60 were what Sumerian math was based on. Sumerians also invent the idea of cuneiform, which was the first true written language. And then Sumerians are also going to be one of the earliest people to invent an organized religion. And this organized religion is used to help them understand nature. Now there will be more about the Sumerians in the lecture two video. Um, remember this is a summer course, so there will be two lecture videos per week. This lecture video, just to ease you in, I want to keep kind of short, so we're going to stop here. Uh, make sure you get all of your, your lesson one work done, and then start working on lesson two. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.